Welcome to reInvent. I'm really, really thrilled uh, you all can make it. I'm, I'm Nick Miller. Um, I lead our US federal AWS Marketplace business, um, and I'm excited to tell you about how AWS Marketplace can help transform the federal customer experience, or for those, I met some people earlier as I was sitting down who are from uh, international partners, uh, maybe your government experiences. Um, I'm thrilled to be joined today um, by my colleague, Eddie Lee. Eddie, why don't you come on up? <laughs> Eddie leads our worldwide public sector channel team, uh, helping channel partners adopt AWS Marketplace. And our partner, um, Matthew Soltis, Vice President of Cloud Solutions and Growth from GDIT. Matthew, if you, if you wouldn't mind coming up. Show of hands as I get started. How many people are leveraging AWS Marketplace today to support a federal program, to sell into a federal program, um, to drive transformation for a federal program? Awesome, awesome. That's a great number, by the way. So I think, I think this really says two things. First, um, there's a, a lot of people in the audience and at reInvent who are experimenting with it, using Marketplace at scale to drive transformation. Uh, and so you should talk to them. Um, and second, uh, hundreds of customers across the federal government and across the worldwide public sector are using Marketplace to transform their procurement. And so I hope this time next year that number triples and we're really talking about more customer success stories, more use cases to really talk about how procurement transformation is so fundamental to digital transformation. And we're really excited to talk to you about how that digital transformation can improve the customer experience. So with that, uh, let's get started. So our government customers are facing uh, growing challenges to improve the customer experience. As cloud computing has become pervasive, as devices have become pervasive, and as the expectations of the citizenry have become pervasive, um, the expectations of governments have also increased. Um, and this includes access to citizen services, access to financial services, improving patient outcomes and healthcare, um, and increasingly, working to improve the delivery of care our nonprofits provide. The work of our government extends to our nation's nonprofits, um, and they're responsible for deploying millions, if not billions, of dollars in federal funds to deliver services to citizens and serve the underprivileged. I mean, in short, nonprofits are addressing some of humanity's greatest and most persistent challenges in support of government mandates to improve society. And without question, this customer experience extends to our national security and Department of Defense customers. Their challenge to accelerate the delivery of capabilities to protect the nation, improve posterity, and really help maintain prosperity of America or your nation's government. I think with all that's going on internationally and in the conflicts, um, this is even more pressing. And in America, over the last two years, the need to transform the customer of experience have accelerated as new executive orders have accelerated the drive for modernization. And this has placed increased demands on the federal workforce. This includes mandates to improve the delivery to rebuild trust in government, while also improving the cybersecurity posture of our nation. In the May 2021 executive order issued by the, the president, he stated, we must design experiences with the federal government that effectively reduce our administrative burden simplify both our public facing and internal processes and improve efficiency. And this is going to empower the workforce to solve problems. AWS offers services to help alleviate the undifferentiated work and lifting associated with the management and maintenance of the underlying IT infrastructure required to improve those services and AWS Marketplace absolutely fits into that model. But for our government customers, when they're thinking about migrating to cloud, there's this balance, this struggle between moving fast and harnessing the speed that cloud provides while doing so in a way that gives confidence to meeting regulated procurement policies, maintains and enhances fair and open competition, and allows our customers to migrate to cloud with their existing partners. Um, at AWS, partners accelerate our, cloud, our, our customers' cloud journey, and they are critical to help maintaining this balance which cloud transformation requires. And as our customers seek to reimagine the customer experience, they focus on digital transformation. IDC estimates that 75% of organizations will be undertaking a digital transformation strategy in the coming years. As organizations around the world are faced to evolve faster than ever, 
and this extends to our public sector customers, our governments, and our nonprofits supporting the work of our nation. And while AWS continues to work backwards from our customers to develop more services, we recognize that large government customers and the enterprise have hundreds of applications with vendors they're seeking to migrate to the cloud, with upwards of 70% of that spend occurring in the line of business or in the government parlance occurring in the mission. And these customers have told us they want to govern who spends what, do so in a way that allows them to leverage a self-service e-commerce experience and consolidate spend on fewer invoices with a catalog of solutions they trust. And based on this feedback and these trends and these challenges from customers, we launched AWS Marketplace. We provide a broad selection of software and data that customers love while enhancing their control and governance. AWS Marketplace is fundamentally transforming the digital software supply chain. And in doing so, we're transforming how customers find, buy, subscribe to, deploy, and govern third-party software. And our customers, from the smallest startups to the enterprises to the largest of government organizations, face software procurement challenges and provisioning challenges that are inhibiting digital transformation. And AWS Marketplace offers features to streamline third-party software adoption, simplify the integration, and help customers modernize their software supply chain. And today, we're doing it at scale. AWS Marketplace has over 3,000 sellers with over 13,000 listings. We have over 330,000 commercial customers. In short, AWS Marketplace provides the government a commercial service for software procurement that drives efficiency required to deliver an improved customer experience. Organizations can provide government builders access to tools and third-party software needed to accelerate innovation while enabling procurement to control software purchasing, provisioning, and budgets. This is a really powerful concept. When we launched AWS Marketplace, we did it under a simple view. How do we provide builders access to a curated catalog of Amazon machine images that they could use to launch EC2 in the cloud fast? With a few clicks, Builders could find machine images pre-built with multiple operating systems, network firewalls, databases, and they could buy those images and add it to their AWS build. But in the decades since, our customers, and increasingly our federal customers, have told us how woefully dissatisfied they are with traditional procurement. And that's music to my ears, because I think AWS Marketplace fundamentally helps transform that. So in addition to machine images, we started with the ability to deploy software as a service, and then move to containers. And then we launched private offers, the ability to execute negotiated contracts through AWS Marketplace with just the click of a button. But what you'll see on this slide, really, that, that speaks to me is how long AWS Marketplace has been committed to the federal space. In 2016, we actually launched the first AirGap Marketplace designed solely to help drive innovation into the US intelligence community. We call that AWS Marketplace for the US intelligence community. And we've been at it for six years, and we have a ton of lessons that we're here to share and show some later in this deck. But as we've scaled, I think we've started to understand the true value that AWS Marketplace can drive for organizations. This innovation has allowed customers to realize economic benefits by streamlining procurement. What you see on this slide is a Forrester consulting total economic study that outlines some of the savings AWS Marketplace provides. And in blue, you see the procurement efficiencies. This composite organization was far smaller than your average government organization. And so you can imagine the efficiency we can drive to transform the government customer experience by moving to a marketplace procurement methodology that makes it easy to buy commercial items using a commercial service that streamlines procurement and aligns it to the AWS cloud contracts that your organizations already have in place. But procurement needs for digital transformation are encumbered by the legacy software supply chain. And the legacy software supply chain has not been built for a digital world. Here are just some of the challenges those who are familiar with public sector face 
when adopting a digital transformation strategy, contract vehicles, how to enhance support for, for small business, how to level the playing field and make it more fair and open, and then a myriad of administrative governance and compliance processes, while necessary, encumber the speed cloud was designed to deliver. All of this leads to AWS customers being saddled with growing O&M cost for legacy applications stuck on-prem that are inhibiting digital transformation. And AWS Marketplace, we think about providing a way to help accelerate that transformation by realizing some of that efficiency to bootstrap your digital transformation journey. And the benefits are clear. In addition to the financial benefits, organizations saw more agility, a 75% reduction in onboarding efforts for new vendors. Think about all of the small startup companies, all of the small vendors that are trying to go to market in your federal programs and how this will work. They saw a 66% time saving due to procurement efficiencies. And really important, consolidated visibility of your software portfolio drove increased licensing flexibility, leading to a 10% reduction in licensing costs. And if you think about a, a, a software budget of $50 million at some of these large government agencies, that's $5 million you can reinvest into the digital transformation journey to deliver improved customer experiences. So what's my team working on? We're thinking about how do we holistically take an approach to streamlining procurement for third-party software that allows us to drive digital transformation. And doing so, save time, reduce effort, increase compliance, increase competition, and improve outcomes for the federal customer. So some of the things we're gonna talk about this year is first, a federal marketplace team, a team of customer advisors out in the field, partnering with our partners, partnering with our sellers to drive adoption of marketplace and make it standard in every one of our AWS contracts. My colleague Eddie is gonna talk about support for worldwide public sector distribution partners and how we're letting the distribution channel fit into the AWS marketplace paradigm. We're gonna talk about some new features and programs and in partnership with GDIT, some that they've built with us to enhance their customers' experience in cloud and provide governance. We're gonna give you an update on our government regions and what we're doing to expand access to third-party software in air gap regions where the sneaker net is the way software is brought into regions, and that slows digital innovation. And then we're gonna close with some customer vignettes. I think driving home different use cases where Marketplace has driven digital transformation to improve the customer experience across important missions can really help you think through how you might adopt Marketplace. We're super excited about the work we've done last year. We're super thrilled to be partnered with many of the partners and customers in this room, and we're looking forward to a great year ahead as we try to drive procurement transformation to improve mission outcomes across the federal government. With that, Eddie, over to you. Thank you, Nick. Can I get a show of hands of how many channel partners are here? Excellent, excellent, thank you. So channel partners have always been, uh, played a pivotal role with our public sector partners, customers, and end users. Uh, so, one of the things that we've done in Marketplace uh, is to, it's, it's quite a unique, as Nick kind of mentioned, some of the challenges we have in public sector. Uh, so we focused in our channel team uh, some of the specifics that we needed to help accelerate adoption and ease of use for our end customers uh, with our channel partners. We launched the AWS Marketplace um, partner uh, program uh, back in 2016. So today we have about 1,300 partners globally, and they have been the influence in driving a lot of the features that we have, uh, like the consulting partner private offer, which allows them to resell ISV partners uh, straight from marketplace. The other demand from our channel partners was they wanted to sell their service to their customers, uh, have their customers access their cloud solutions and uh, um, a ser a professional services. So we launched professional services in 2020 uh, with a host of um, uh, consulting partners here at reInvent. They are actually driving a lot of the listings. And so what has changed from the channel partner perspective is, which was traditionally heavy in reselling, has now shifting towards our channel partners becoming the sellers. They are actually providing integrated solutions and custom solutions to support their customers' unique mission requirements, which is always changing. This is also generating public sector specific listings in marketplace. 
And I'll be honest, I didn't know there was 800 plus in Marketplace today. I knew that a lot of our partners were building custom solutions for their government customers so that the customers can disseminate with, across their organizations. I want to talk about, uh, Nick mentioned about distribution. So distribution has been a long time request by our ISV partners. In public sector, our distributors manage their, the ISVs, contract vehicles. They also manage their downstream channel uh, partner resale business. So this has been an ongoing request by our ISVs in which they would like to have their distributor to be able to manage their channel partner resale business. So in 2021, last year, uh, we worked with two ISV partners and a distributor called Kerasoft, uh, which is predominantly US public sector. And we began to evaluate the, the platform that was needed to build this kind of two-tier uh, private offer enablement, where the distributor and the channel partner can both collectively co-sell on an ISV transaction. This also, uh, where we had f specific features the ISVs wanted was they wanted to be able to authorize uh, the specific listings to the distributor, as well as the downstream channel uh, programs, and as well as our co-sell enablement. So through 2021, we worked with the IS two ISV partners in Kerasoft and built a program called Distributor Cell of Record, or DSOR. So DSOR basically, in the simplest form, allows the distributor to list the ISV's product in Marketplace <sighs> under their under their, under their label. So this way, the distributor can manage the ISV's full CPPO, or Consulting Partner Private Offer, resell downstream enablement with channel partners on behalf of the ISV. This very much replicates the traditional model, except it's now modernized in, in a, in, through AWS Marketplace. This year, we expanded the program. There are now 40 plus ISVs in the DSOR program and, and growing. So again, the benefits here is the ISV has their preferred distributor who can manage their contract vehicles, terms and conditions. They also have the distributor able to help provide training, onboarding, uh, all their marketplace requirements and providing the end-to-end -end transaction to their customers. Customers like it because they can go to their preferred channel partner saying, I want to buy Okta or Splunk. And they now have full access in, in a single shop, and they've been purchasing from Kerasoft to begin with, so there's already an existing relation. So this eases the whole access from the ISV through the distributor, through a channel partner, and the end customer. One of the things we discovered, uh, this was a, a, a Karaki was a concept we developed uh, with Kerasoft uh, that was driven by customers. So we had customers that have lots of ISV uh, vendors that they wish to purchase, but they were not available in Marketplace. Uh, and so it caused a lot of the challenges because the ISV was still working on their listing, uh, but were missing opportunities and couldn't support the, uh, the end customer. So we work with Kerasoft to develop basically what we call like a starter uh, listing. And this listing was to support SaaS ISV vendors that did not have a listing in Marketplace, but that could still transact while they finished uh, their uh, permanent listing in Marketplace. This was a huge delight for government customers because now they can basically request specific ISVs from their preferred channel partners and can be fully supported by Kerasoft through either uh, di the distribution cell of record program or directly. In 2019, we launched a feature called Private Marketplace. This is probably the most requested feature by government customers, um, and not just government, I mean customers in general. Private Marketplace allows organizations to create their own custom instance uh, on, on the, right on their AWS account. And so they can select their specific ISVs and services from the commercial marketplace and have limitations so that they can govern that across their organizations. 
I bring up uh, private marketplace because this has been a, a, a turning point for a lot of our customers where they are now realizing they can create more of a custom marketplace experience beyond just buying uh, straight uh, third-party titles from marketplace. And what's interesting is it's the consulting partners that are actually helping the government entities with their private marketplace establishment. Uh, this is something that uh, our good friend Matt Soltis is going to be providing some uh, highlights on, so I'll, I'll uh, save some of the uh, details here so uh, you can enjoy his uh, demonstration. So the outlook, in summary, for our consulting partners is we are going to continue to see a greater selection of solutions uh, and, and very much custom offerings uh, to support their government customers. Uh, we, in fact, uh, this week I've already, or I'm sorry, last week we've already worked with several eyes uh, channel partners that had some very unique listings that they want to add into marketplace to, sp uh, to support a nationwide um, uh, health project. So we are seeing more and more of these customizations of special projects and solutions that are being delivered um, and listed by uh, channel partners. This also is leveraging their existing contracts. So what we're seeing is this kind of end-to-end uh, -end kind of ease of access for the customers, which they already are have a, an approved contract vehicle with their preferred uh, channel partner. So they can buy these services, product listings, and offerings directly off their contract. The other, uh, the last part, the, uh, the pilots. Uh, this is a personal favorite of mine, uh, probably where I spend a lot of my time. So as I mentioned, this is still day one for us as we are working with our channel partners. We have a long way to go on, on the features that we want to provide for our public sector customers. So we have constant um, pipeline of, of requests for features. And so uh, we welcome any kind of uh, opportunities to work with you guys on any projects, uh, features that you feel would be beneficial for your end customer. We are working on actually quite a few right now, which we will be announcing next year. Um, uh, and this is also where we've um, basically created the DSOR and the CARIQ uh, project from. And with that, I'd like to introduce Matt Saltz as Vice President of Cloud Solutions at GDIT. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, Nick. So just so I can get to know some of you, uh, who is from the customer side? <coughs> Federal agencies, buyers, a couple hands. OK. What about ISVs, software providers? OK. Uh, systems integrators, consulting providers? Good. Good. OK, that's helpful. Um, I have the honor <coughs> of, uh, of representing uh, GDIT. Um, and what we've seen is some fascinating things in the market uh, around the software supply chain, as Nick and Eddie have talked about. We see three traditional large blockers that I'm going to work through, and then I'm going to show you a use case on how we've solved those blockers with one specific customer. On the GD side, General Dynamics, uh, a rather large federal integrator, we use a ton of technology and cloud and software ourselves. So from our own use, um, and we're passionate about the solutions that AWS has to offer to advance the mission, whether that's electric boat or land systems or mission systems, some of the satellite work we do, or in my division, uh, General Dynamics Information Technology, where we're working directly with customers to build solutions and outcomes. <clears throat> and we have a, a large number of customers, about 80 active cloud projects today, uh, over 60,000 uh, managed instances of cloud that are underway. It's from these customers that we've learned a lot about what's driving cloud adoption in the federal space. And what are the blockers in different areas like software procurement, digital supply chain. We have a model we love to talk about when I sit down with the CIO, um, I ask him about cloud and the first part of the conversation is always tech, geeky, exciting, uh, uh, you know, feature <laughs> function kind of things. And then there comes a transition point in the conversation when the ex executive says, I love the tech. I'll do it all day long, but what I'm really fundamentally interested in is how does the cloud drive my mission? Nick mentioned this already. It's all about the mission outcomes for our executives in the federal agencies. Here's a couple themes where they're using cloud. We talk about with customers, and they've told us, and we're learning together, on how cloud actually drives their mission, whether it's using incredible migration <laughs> programs uh, to consolidate apps and data, 
setting up DevSecOps pipelines, uh, using financial management for very large cloud workloads, uh, things like security or choosing cloud native technologies, uh, data architectures, data lakes. There's a lot of mission drivers here. Interestingly, for these nine, all of them intensely involve a lot of software. Some cloud native things from AWS, but very often a lot of third party software. And uh, right down there in the center are the digital acquisition or cloud software management with Marketplace. I very often hear CIOs tell me, or even on our own projects, hey, our migration is halted because we need to procure a firewall. Has to go out to, to solicitation, has to go out to be bid, has to get quotes, has to go through the procurement process. And how long does that take? Let me ask you who raised your hands on the customer side uh, that are federal agencies. How long does it take you to get a piece of software in a house that's new? This is the audience <laughs> response part of the dialogue. <laughs> I, heard a, I, heard, I heard a year. I heard a year. Uh, weeks, right? Months. Uh, that's just way too long. That just simply doesn't scale, and that stops innovation in all of these fundamental areas. So when we talk about this digital supply chain, um, this is actually a, a workflow for a specific agency and organization. Some of you are laughing. Some of you are saying, oh, that looks simple. My, uh, <laughs> my agency or organization is a little bit more complicated. In the federal space, you think about the FAR, uh, GWACs, acquisition vehicles, schedules, the warranted contracting officer, or all the new cyber directives Nick was talking about. There's a lot of things that the digital supply chain or the software supply chain for federal is really encumbered by. Uh, and I'm going to actually give you just three uh, here. We're going to go through each of these three in, 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 in sequence. The first one is mapping out and understanding the agency's procurement process. And the first best practice is to actually intentionally do it in agencies. We're doing this with a number of organizations in the federal space. I sat down with the CIO about a year ago, and I said, how do you get software into your organization? You know what his answer was? I call Margo his deputy of procurement for, uh, for cloud software. That, that, that was the answer to the official process of, of how software is acquired in an organization. That just doesn't scale, and that's all kinds of opportunity for us to help agencies. So really, the first best practice, and I'm going to show this in the use case that we demonstrate, is to map out the actual process that agencies are going through to acquire software. What's interesting about that is there's a number of roles, whether they get to actually make a, a definitive vote, stop the process, or express an opinion, there's a number of roles when you need to acquire software or solutions around the tech landscape. It could be the CIO's shop, it could be developers, it could be the finance organization, um, you know, getting the, the, the money in place. Interestingly, two critically important ones is the security team, and on the right-hand side, of course, the procurement team. We do a lot of work with customers around cloud brokerage, where an agency says, hey, I need you to run our brokerage, the ordering, the process, the management, all of the contracts, the vehicles, the schedules, the reference architecture, the provisioning system. A little picture on the right-hand side shows sort of the seven fundamental things you need to do as a cloud broker, whether it's for Navy, a number of uh, uh, civilian agencies. When we run these brokers, there's a lot of process in that's involved. What's interesting is the roles in many federal organizations and the approval process and workflow already exists. It may be some paper, maybe some Excel spreadsheets, it may be an automation system, um, but that process exists for cloud. Now's the opportunity to bring that along and bring Marketplace actually along uh, to solve that problem. But the key learning here in the theme is make sure the roles and the approvers and the authority individuals that are involved in this process are at the table with you to address your software supply chain problems and challenges. You can't go anywhere in federal without talking about, oh, come on, you guys are a quiet group. Security. Um, whether it's uh, uh, the president's recent cyber directives, um, uh, 140, uh, 28, uh, whether it's the zero trust directives, the recent things coming out of OMB, there is a lot of things and very appropriate coming out around cybersecurity and the software supply chain. There's directives, there's mandates, some interesting recent ones from OMB. Every federal CIO must catalog all the software used in their infrastructure. They must report on every single vendor they're using in their, uh, in their environment. This is a pretty large burden. There's a lot of work involved in doing this. Well, where do you catalog it? How do you manage it? How do you get it all coordinated together? 
Uh, NSA and, uh, and CISA recently re released an excellent uh, white paper on the software supply chain. Great reading if you're anywhere in the public sector space or even the civilian space, because some of the implications for banking, critical infrastructure, um, manufacturing organizations around how do you assure that software supply chain um, are, are just, just uh, are gonna start to transform our industry. One of the main themes of that paper is this concept of visibility. You have to know who is using what software where, where it's deployed, how it's managed. If you look at that little diagram in the center, uh, the NSA white paper talks about this concept where you have developers on one side trying to develop software, and you have customers that are gonna consume it on the other side, and in the middle of that supply chain is suppliers. Well, that's resellers, that's partners, that's ISVs, but that's also organizations like AWS. Um, you may not know this, but AWS Marketplace does some fantastic things with the software in its catalog. They assure every and they uh, validate every single vendor. They get the banking account number of every vendor that comes into the marketplace. They scan all the software titles constantly, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Uh, they have metadata about the software. The software is digitally signed. Um, here's an interesting one. It's purposely built to run on AWS and it's already integrated. That's just the stuff you get out of the box with Marketplace. The Marketplace service itself audits, tracks usage, uh, does version management, looks at where the software is deployed, how much is, is it being used. Again, that theme of visibility is really the first step to, uh, to set down the process of secure supply chain. Um, I, I sat with a, with a customer who started this process with Marketplace uh, four years ago, and their default response was, we can't secure it, so we're going to disable it, right? Don't know what titles, don't know who's using it, don't know where it's at, I can't control it, so it's disabled. When we recently went through this process and we started to use private Marketplace and some of the automation with their own tools, the standard in this organization going forward is the only software you run in AWS is the software procured and managed out of Marketplace because that's the value this organization sees from all these features. Okay, so we talked about uh, integrating into the agency process. We talked about getting the roles right, and we talked about how do you address, or at least start to address some of the security concerns. Here's a use case with a large uh, US federal healthcare agency, and we've been doing cloud brokerage, cloud deployment, and cloud management for this organization for over five years. They start it, like many organizations, credit card will consume cloud. Nobody's laughing. Uh, but that, that's sort of a standard process. That's how we all start. Uh, every group, every team, every organization that can get a credit card start to consume and set up their own cloud infrastructure, their cloud processes. Didn't have standardization, didn't have consolidation, weren't using all the values of the cloud, there was no automation, there was no provisioning engines, there was no reporting. Over time, they started to consolidate this, and we ran the brokerage processes, helped them to do this process. What they found is as they consolidated it, they actually got more value. They were faster and able to drive the mission better. The logical extension over the last year with this organization is to add marketplace, and specifically private marketplace, to get over those security and process barriers. Eddie alluded, to, uh, Eddie alluded to a little bit of concepts of private marketplace already, and here's the basic concept. Thousands of titles in marketplace, but for my organization, my agency, I only need 100. We don't need 50 firewalls. We have one that's our standard, right? We need specific tools that we have licenses for, we vet it, we know, and we have a catalog for. That's the basic concept of private marketplace. Organizations love the ability to curate this, uh, this capability and offer it back to customers. So uh, I mentioned a couple roles. How do you get the roles right? Let me just give you three simple roles. We'll see when I do a demo here in a second. Three kind of functional roles that you need to get right. First role at the bottom there, you have a buyer, a subscriber, someone that wants to use software, right? And that individual comes to the marketplace portal and says, here's the title I want, I need it for my process. Second role, second functional role is the person that actually curates the catalog. It's a catalog manager. Um, decides what songs are on the jukebox, right? Um, and you could curate that catalog and those titles through private marketplace. The third one that's super important is all of the process and the workflow for approvals. 
Yes, you're authorized to buy. Yes, you have budget in place. Yes, your security screening has been done. Yes, the title is acceptable. Yes, you have a mission need, and yes, the CIO approves. I just went through a number of roles there, but that's that third approval bucket. Marketplace does a great job with the first two. The user experience, the buying experience, it does a fantastic job with a curated catalog, but what it doesn't do is approval workflows. And this is where the AWS Private Marketplace Connector comes into play. We've worked with AWS to develop and enhance some of this for, uh, for some customer use cases. The one I'm going to show you is with the agency, an agency using Atlassian or Jira for the approval process. It could be ServiceNow, it could be BMC, it could be some other enterprise engine. All our large customers have workflow approval, ITSM systems, track management chain systems that have already have extensive workflows in place. And in this use case, it's a, it's a connection process. How do you plumb those two together? the values of marketplace for the catalog, and the values of the approval workflow to get all the sign off and all the stakeholders at the table to approve the process. I uh, have to show at least one architectural diagram. Here's one <laughs> for the AWS Marketplace Private Connector. Um, relatively straightforward, uh, AWS Marketplace has a phenomenal API. Jira, ServiceNow also have very good APIs. Uh, what we've done is, uh, is, is take those APIs uh, and then using CXML, uh, AWS WAF, API Gateway, and a set of Lambda functions, plumb those two APIs together to do the correct workflow and passing of data back and forth. Get product details, status, um, catalog approval, uh, validate approvals, right? These, these two uh, APIs of the uh, uh, workflow process and the marketplace integration going back and forth. Interestingly, the tech is the easy part here. Uh, you and I can go code this in a relatively short period of time. The approval flow, the workflow, what's your procurement process, and who needs to approve where and what kind of workflow. That's the hard work that actually needs to be done behind the scenes. So uh, nothing works better than a demo. Let me see if I can uh, do this in a, in a demo <laughs> fashion to show you a little capability here. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a use case where a user comes into a private marketplace, a set of titles, and they're going to actually pick a title to deploy in an EC2 instance. OK, so um, we're, uh, we're jumping in here. We're in private marketplace. We've authenticated. This is the GDIT one that's set up. You can see the user's role there. Uh, they're going to authenticate in. They're going to see the titles that their agency has set up. I think there's 21 approved products in the catalog here. Uh, Red Hat, Microsoft, a couple open source pieces. Uh, the, the subscriber is going to scroll down, find something they like. Uh, they're going to pick Splunk. Uh, they're going to look at the product details page. They find Splunk. They're looking through it. They say, yep, this is the one I want. I want to get this up and running. They go to the process to subscribe. And they click on subscribe, and, and as you can see, they actually can't do the deploy now. Uh, they need to submit for approval, right? So they click submit for approval. What happens behind the scenes, all those beautiful Lambda functions, that API interface and the handshake happens. And now it says we're redirecting you to your procurement process. Uh, we're in JIRA right now. We've passed all the details about what that product is, the user's identity, credentials, security standards, and what they actually want to do. They fill out an additional set of metadata here, um, what they want to deploy, where they want to deploy it, what's the approval, um, you know, who needs to approve it. You see all the things like the signatures and, um, and the signed items. And then they submit it, right? It goes into a JIRA workflow. Uh, you, go back into, uh, you go back into Marketplace, and you can see actually there, there, uh, there is no Splunk subscription, right? Because it has not been approved yet. Now the approver comes in, approval does the approval workflow. Yes, for testing, uh, Ryan is completely approved to use this product, right? What you don't see is there could be multiple steps in the back end of JIRA, security, compliance, uh, you know, uh, uh, private offer, financial details, nipper, sipper money, um, you know, send money over to, to cover the costs, do a security scan, whatever actually needs to be done. The JIRA process runs, uh, the workflow is approved. Right? Um, yes, I approve Ryan to use Splunk. Ryan comes back into Marketplace here. He refreshes, and there you go. Splunk is up. It's active. Uh, now Ryan could actually deploy Splunk in, in uh, his, his environment.
goes and logs in, Splunk is available, does the deployment in the standard marketplace de deployment process. What you see from the basic demo there um, is the users, the roles, the authentication, and the integration with the agency's workflow and process for approval. Now, your, your process may vary, your customer's process may vary, but the basic details are there um, to integrate marketplace and get over some of those standard ex exceptions or, or concerns uh, an agency has. Let me make just a couple comments to those of you who are ISVs in the room uh, and working in the federal ecosystem, both with large integrators like GDIT and others uh, and working on federal contracts. Uh, the, the first one I'll say is really aligning what you want to do with your software with the agency's procurement, the agency's budget, the agency's vehicles and schedules, and the systems integrator's vehicles and schedules. Um, this is really just a standard common sense best practice, uh, but this is something where integrators and those vehicles and schedules holders, whether it's someone like GDIT or Kerasoft, can actually really help you. Um, you want to get your software into an agency, make sure it's aligned with the budgetary cycle, the approval cycle, and the agency's budget. Understand how things like consulting partner private offers and the resale model in federal will benefit the ecosystem. This is super important for us. Uh, we love working with ISVs uh, to, to deploy and, and resell the software, but more importantly for an integrator, it's all about doing the consulting, the integration, the project-based work. Uh, and that's where we actually get excited working with you on the ISV side. Two more quick ones I'll highlight. Uh, I, I hear this a lot now. When uh, purchase decisions are being made by a CIO, they often ask, how does this third-party piece of software integrate with standard AWS tools and process? How does it handle logs? How does it handle security? The better your product from an ISV side, a third-party product, integrates with the AWS ecosystem, the better off it's going to be, and I think the faster your adoption will be. And then the last one on here I think is super interesting and an opportunity for all of us to work together. Uh, federal agencies, government agencies, love to do pilots, proof of concepts. You touch it, you see it, you taste it, you can kick the tires, uh, and Marketplace provides a really unique opportunity to do that. Um, software is deployed, work with AWS to get some credits uh, on, the, on the integrator side. We love to do pilots, right, where there's a specific problem we're trying to work to solve to show innovation. So using this system, this ecosystem, both with AWS and Marketplace and the integrator is an opportunity to do that. Well, let me flip it again one more time. If you're on the customer side, what are some of the best practices to adopt a, a private marketplace and uh, marketplace workflows to solve some of these challenges? You gotta integrate into your agency's workflow. Even if it's simple, even if it's steps and process, uh, even if it's just the start of these kind of basic integrations, use what the organization already has in procurement to get this started. Acknowledge the roles, the approvals, the sign-off people that need to check the box to get the software through and give them the ability to vote and be engaged at the table. The last two I'll mention uh, I think are, 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 um, are super interesting. Uh, when you look at an agency, a big federal agency's catalog, very often there's a large number of open source products, sometimes even free products. One of the easy buttons for that use case that I showed to get marketplace and private marketplace started is to put vetted, scanned, open source products in the catalog that are free. CISO loves it, I can scan it, I know where it's at, I know it's a, the vetted version, no one's going to an FTP site to download software in my agency. Uh, they're going to Marketplace actually to get it, but that's an easy process to start adoption and usage of Marketplace. And the last one I'll mention kind of as a bonus, um, a process of tagging, of FinOps management, of, of financial management and forecasting is really big for federal right now. This is a big theme and things we work on a lot with our customers. Uh, tagging marketplace software and deployed software and using a management process to also do that gives you all kinds of benefits down the line as you start to build the concepts of a digital supply chain um, using these best practices will help you increase adoption i'm super excited about what the aws team is doing here and the opportunity to work with them to help improve the digital supply chain thank you nick i'll pass it back to you awesome Thanks so much, Matt. Um, we love what we've done. I think that, you know, this first of kind integration really shows how marketplace can become mainstream as part of an agency software procurement process. I love the quote Matt put up there that says, visibility is the first step to improving and enhancing security. 
And as if you think about it from the lens of a CIO, if you can start to wrap your arms around all of the software coming onto your network, um, you're going to enhance your security posture, and then you can start looking at the next set of, of security practices you need. So I'm gonna flip it now. We talked a little bit about kind of programmatically what are we doing to help drive and streamline procurement in the federal space. Um, and we, we talked about the channel partner and how we're enabling channels. We talked about how we're partnered with system integrators like GDIT to really help fit into these large cloud programs and the benefits. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we're doing to support the government mission. Um, simplifying the mission user's ability to put innovative technology on the mission to get the solutions they need is one of the blockers that's really in, needing to be removed to drive mission and digital transformation. And so I'm gonna highlight three vignettes around what we're trying to do in this space, but we're at reInvent. I think the goal here is to really learn from partners like GDIT, learn from distributors like Kerasoft, talk to each other about what are we doing. And so first I'm gonna talk about something I mentioned earlier in, in the brief, around what is AWS Marketplace doing to simplify the adoption of third-party software uh, in our AWS Marketplace for US intelligence community, or what we call our Amazon dedicated cloud regions. How do we provide air gap support for national security and defense customers? Um, I mentioned we launched IC Marketplace in 2016, and we learned a ton. I mean, one of the first things we learned is that our channel program didn't even launch until 2018, and channel partners are really critical to driving adoption. But what we've heard time and time again from partners is they want a consistent way to onboard software in the region. I, I like to tell a little vignette. Early in my time at AWS, I joined about three and a half years ago. So this is my, I guess, fourth reInvent, third one in person. Um, I got a call from a customer and said, oh my goodness, I can't believe that software title is now available in the IC marketplace. Every month I would download that software, I would sneaker net it to my agency, and I would bring it up into the high side. And that's great for a monthly cadence, but imagine what happens if a zero day comes out. How do you get that into region? And oh, by the way, you've done all the hard and heavy lifting of bringing that software into region. You now become the distribution point for the rest of the community on that network, right? And so what AWS Marketplace for the US intelligence community, going back to this free use case, right, is we're providing a consistent way to onboard software into region accredited to support workloads for this, the secret and top secret region. And admittedly, we're pending ATO for the secret region, but we have active customers using it with exceptions. Additionally, back to that assurance, what are we doing to provide that curation function for the catalog? Every vendor we list in that marketplace has gone through a programmatic approach to vet the, fo the foci of that software. And so we work with the government to ensure that those vendors that come in are meeting the government's foci compliance requirements. And we've aligned cloud purchases through those marketplaces to existing cloud contracts and provided a way to enable rapid teaming. And so I just wanna highlight the list of partners we have in these regions. And some of these partners are doing great work to support the mission of the federal government. And we'd love to do more. We know that the government is embarking on this massive cloud transformation, particularly at these higher classification levels. The next use case I'm gonna talk about is, is Wicker. Um, AWS Wicker is a single enterprise product that contains a full suite of collaboration capabilities, um, and it uses state-of-the-art encryption. Right? It provides multi-device messaging from computers to mobile devices um, without the need for VPN or special software. You can imagine the use cases this was, this was used for. Um, they're using it to combat human trafficking. There's a talk Wednesday on that. They used it to support the evacuation in Afghanistan. There's a talk later on that. So later this, or earlier this summer, we announced that SaaS offerings were available in DoD Cloud One, and particularly Wicker RAM was available in the US Air Force Cloud One via AWS Marketplace. And you can see the, the quote here from the Chief Technology Officer of, of US Air Force Special Operations Command talking about the importance of Wicker RAM and how it allows them to collaborate both at the tactile edge and at higher levels. What wasn't captured in this quote is some of the how. And this gets back to where Marketplace really simplifies the procurement and enables digital transformation. And so this next slide, back to Matt, you always need an architecture slide. Um, <laughs> but, I, but I do think this really helps kind of simplify, you know, what if we could enable multi-tenant SaaS for government? How do we turn some of these government programs into products where now user onboarding is a competitive process, right? And so in this environment, AFSOC had built a Wicker RAM instance with GDIT Arma scaled up, accredited at IL-5, 
where AFSOC was maintaining the compliance and the accreditation for that. And they wanted to turn this into a multi-tenant environment, but if they did so, they knew that that new tenant would drive compute that they couldn't buy, due to or couldn't, couldn't pay for due to regulations like anti-deficiency, um, and that they didn't want to have to deal with from the MIP or processing perspective. And so working with the Cloud One program, with SAIC, with GDIT, we're able to flip that single tenant cloud instance into a multi-tenant cloud instance enabled through AWS Marketplace. And so the billing and the spend for the compute of Wicker RAM was shipped off to Wicker, and the compute cost was modeled in the per user license cost of the Wicker RAM solution. And so now the value of this grows as the collaboration environment grows in the number of users. And what you see is AWS private offers, AWS Marketplace private offers, is the methodology to onboard new users. Now when a new user wants to buy this in the cloud, they simply send funding to their cloud budget, they request a private offer, and that's added as part of their consolidated billing. And as I've talked to government customers and system integrators, there's a number of different SaaS applications or applications that want to become multi-tenant that fit the same model where AWS, private, AWS Marketplace private offers can enable the billing, spend management, and utility consumption of third-party software or government applications that need to be turned into a third-party model. The last application I really want to talk about is what we call Project Argus. Project Argus is a federated collection of data sets that live in AWS Data Exchange, our third-party data marketplace, and analytic tools and visualization interfaces served up from AWS Marketplace. This solution helps organizations build custom land, sea, and space domain awareness platforms. Imagine needing to provide critical space domain awareness using only commercial solutions. This is actually the genesis for the Project Argus framework. Argus combines the required Earth and space data with analytic tools from AWS partners that you see on this slide here to deliver these types of targeted insights for critical mission use cases. In short, Argus provides aerospace and geospatial insights powered by AWS and our AWS partners. I lied, you get two architecture slides. <laughs> and, and the core tenant here is, you know, how does AWS Marketplace, of which AWS Data Exchange is, is part of the AWS Marketplace family, provide a plug and play approach to deliver solutions in an as a service model. And so AWS works with our partners and recruits our partners to put their Argus modules into AWS Marketplace. And data providers to put their Argus data sets and recipes for those data sets into AWS data, data Exchange. Our customers then can discover AWS, uh, Argus solutions the same way they browse and find solutions in AWS Marketplace. And procurement and integration is all added to the customer's consolidated bill through the existing procurement motions that that agency works or uses to spin up in an as-a-service model this decision-ready information uh, with the streamlined procurement and licensing powered at the speed of mission. And I'm going to close by talking about how we're scaling innovation to government missions. You know, we've had multiple ISVs announce how Marketplace is actually scaling their success in the federal government. And if you look at these, many of these are small ISVs, uh, startup companies, that traditionally would struggle to enter the federal market, and we're helping them scale. The quote from Envale talks about scaling new privacy-enhancing technologies, and how their revenue grew 300% year over year, 300% in two years, and Marketplace was critical to that journey. Kaleido, a startup that focused on the commercial sector, hadn't considered a customer. One of their first transactions was enabled by having a marketplace that streamlines procurements and helps a large, a small startup company navigate the difficult federal procurement cycle for innovative technologies. And Click, we helped accelerate their adoption in the national security community by over a year, a year ahead of forecast. This is the type of innovation we need to drive into the federal government to help transform our customers' experience and how our government delivers services. With that, we have some contact information up here. We're really excited about what we're doing in AWS Marketplace to support our federal government to help them deliver improved outcomes, and we're thrilled to talk to them. If you have any questions, we'll be around after the talk, and uh, thank you for your time.